If insulation doesn't speed up, we might have an issue. What's going on everybody? I'm Jason with Buy, Build, Sell. I'm your Los Angeles contractor and developer. And today, we are here at our Bluebell project. The stats on this little thing, just in case you forgot, over 10,000 square feet of land, over 6,000 square foot of house, and a bunch of really cool stuff that we got going on here. Today, we have our house completely wrapped with our lath, and we have uh, insulation going in and drywall starting. Because the house is so big, we're actually able to get both trades in at the same time. Usually on a smaller house, we have to complete insulation before drywall goes in. But since there's so much space, we were able to get the insulation going in, drywall guys going on upstairs, insulation going on downstairs with no interruptions or, or no fumbling or anything like that. So I've got a lot of stuff to show you today. Come on, take a look with me. So what you're gonna see in this episode is the tips and tricks of the insulation and drywall insulation, making sure that those come out right, making sure they're done properly. And you might even see me doing some work myself. So let's go through the buy build on this project. The, the project was purchased somewhere between the one five to $2 million range. And you have a build here that's gonna be somewhere between the two to probably two and a half million dollar range. On that, on that, on that uh, metric, you're probably looking at about a four to $5 million all in cost to be doing this project. With that being said, the valuation of this project, the end of it is gonna be somewhere close to that six, six and a half million dollar range. On a, on a, when, you're, when you're the client, when you're the end user doing a project like that, that spread, that's the, that's the developer's profit, right? So you actually have the ability to use that spread as leverage to actually refinance your project, refinance your home, pull all your capital back out, back into your pocket, and you're essentially living in this house with the money back in your pocket, which is a brilliant move to be making. Uh, and it's the, the advice I give a lot of my friends. Just to kind of condense that information really fast for you, if you are able to spend $2 million to get a $3 million asset, okay, hypothetical numbers here, if you're able to spend $2 million to get a $3 million asset and you can refinance at 75%, let's say, you're gonna be able to get your $2 million back, probably have cash in your pocket, and you're only spending, you're only taking the loan of that 75%, you basically built the house for free. Now you can take that money, you can go invest it, you can go play with it, you can do whatever you need to do with it, and you're living well. So some really smart investment advice for you if uh, you ever feel like that's something you wanna play around with. So those are the numbers, but today we're talking about insulation and drywall because that's what we're doing today. Now, we, as you can see, we have drywall stacked, we have our insulation in, but this is actually the most important uh, thing about this house. So because we're doing stucco on this house, which as you know, is not a very common thing that I do on my projects, we're doing something very interesting. The whole entire house is wrapped in lath, ready for stucco, ready for that base coat, but we're not gonna shoot the house until drywall is completely installed. The reason for that is because we actually want the house to settle a little bit before we actually shoot that that uh, that base coat, so there's we minimize the amount of cracking that we have. So the house actually needs to carry some weight for the house to actually settle appropriately. So we're gonna get the drywall installed, start taping, and once we feel like we've given it enough time, then we'll start that stucco process. Until then, we're working on the interiors. So let's get started with insulation. Insulation is basically that barrier between the interior and the exterior, allowing the home to stay as consistent in temperature as possible. It kind of regulates the temperatures between, uh, between noise and, uh, and weather conditions as well between, between the house. Because if you kind of notice, 
without this here, there isn't too much that's going to be uh, in your way between the exterior and the interior. You have all of these voids. If everything was all studded up, you probably wouldn't have too much of an issue, but because we keep those studs 16 on center, we have to put something to, to, to fill those voids. So especially on the exterior walls, we're very concerned about putting insulation right. So on the exterior walls, I believe we have R19 value. On the roof, we have R30. And again, the more the R value is, the more dense the product is. That means that the more thick in, on the, in the, the thickness of the material, not necessarily in actual uh, thickness, but the gauge essentially, right? is that it's stronger, it's thicker, it's more dense. So those R values correlate with that sort of information. On the interior walls, we're able to put R11 or R13, just because there's no actual requirement to those needs. So we're able to kind of mess around with that and keep that as, uh, you know, to our, our, our requirements for ourselves. As you can see, We've already gone through the house and we've, we've taken our spray foam and that spray foam, I don't actually know what the R value of that spray foam is, I should check, but we're not, we're, we're really just trying to fill those voids to make sure that we're eliminating airflow and uh, any possible uh, transfer that could reduce heat or cold within the home and keep it as efficient as possible. So that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, on the drywall, so now you can see literally like, I mean, in this, in this section that we're having right here, you can see open studs, you see insulation on the ceiling, and you can hear the screws being screwed in on the drywall. So we'll go check that out. Guys move fast, they move fast. So right now, <laughs> I'm very impressed. They literally started hanging this morning. I think they have one, two, and three bedrooms already done. That's incredible. And in here, they're getting started. So this is the master bedroom. You're getting started on the ceilings here. I guess they'll be working their way down. So they're knocking out the bedrooms first before they walk into the hallway. This is actually pretty nerve wracking. I didn't realize how fast they were gonna be rolling with this thing. And uh, if insulation doesn't speed up, we might have an issue. All right. So when doing insulation, when doing uh, drywall, there isn't really too much to uh, know. There aren't that many boards of drywall you got it there there's some that uh so there, there are some there are some different colors and those might give you the idea so like this one's purple right here that'll that'll uh you know that has more moisture tolerant uh, capabilities so it's a little bit more tolerant of water being on it uh there are different there are a few different types of drywall there aren't that many but the truth the the thing that really needs to be concerned about when installing drywall is screws every seven inches a lot of different ways of installing drywall to be honest not everyone installs it the same way so this guy who's installing the drywall in this house is installing it horizontal some people think that they can save material or save time or save labor if they're actually doing less cuts so on a on on this sort of ceiling so this is a 10 foot ceiling so some drywall guys will actually say, okay, I'm gonna get a 10 foot, I'm gonna buy 10 foot sheets and I'm gonna stack them vertical along the wall and then they'll just have joints going vertical as opposed to horizontal. Some people wanna get the bigger sheets that they get like the 12 or the 14s and they'll stall them horizontal, they don't really care. So do I have an opinion? I really don't. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not the one doing the hanging. So some people feel that the shorter boards are easy to carry. 
a lighter. There are, there are multiple different types of uh, densities in drywall. So you can get really, you can get the same sheet of drywall, one being like 15 pounds and one being five or something like that. Like, I mean, there are weights to these things where actually it does matter, especially when you're holding it up in the ceiling and you're trying to screw it all in, it gets very heavy. And these guys are working out all day, essentially. Uh, so all you gym buffs start a drywall business. We really try to avoid nails. What happens with nails is they actually end up popping out. They don't end up staying in very much because you get a lot of reverberation. So the, those nails actually end up beginning to shake and kind of wiggle out and you get little pops in, uh, in, your, in your drywall. Like so you'll have a smooth, clean line and you'll see a little round uh, point on the drywall and you can't really get rid of it. You actually have to slam that, slam that nail back in, you know, coat on top of it again, repaint again. It's a little bit annoying. So we really try to avoid uh, nails as much as possible, just using screws, uh, which is getting easier with technology, uh, handheld units, handheld batteries, uh, guns that have batteries and are just kind of preloaded. All of those tools that are actually gaining, gaining exposure because of the internet is really helping the trades do better jobs. So I'm excited about it. We gotta make sure we tape our HVAC vents. So the reason why we tape them is to avoid having as, uh, as much dirt or dust or debris getting into that void. Because if we don't tape them, we don't kind of seal them off, then at the end of the project, we need to clean them to make sure that they're not actually blowing out all that debris that was just, you know, clogging up those vents during construction. So it's a lot easier just to vent the, to close them now as opposed to dealing with it later. So something interesting that I, I actually, I haven't had to deal with in a long time, but you see this piece of plywood right here? This is actually the only entrance that I have to getting this section, this wall insulated. Now down here, I have it from the other side of, on, the sec, on the first floor, but on the second floor, this is an exterior wall that's sheared on this side and on the outside. So I actually had to take this piece of plywood off, insulate it and put the plywood back on. It's more important that you're thinking through, hey, how do I get the insulation in there? Uh, because if this was strapped, like you see how there's a strap right here? If this was here, I would have had to actually break the lath, break the, break the outside to get the insulation in. You don't want to leave a pocket exposed. That's just definitely not something you want to do. Because that will affect your airflow, it will affect your energy efficiency in the house. Okay, Alex, I'm ready to help you. Let's go. Grab your pitchforks and whatever this is called. <laughs> What's this called? I don't know. We don't know. Nobody has a name for it. Nobody has a name for it? It's a pool, man. That's all it is. It's a pool stick. The goal with insulation is to get it in as tight as possible uh, and really fill, fill all the gaps and voids. So by doing that, we restrict airflow, we restrict pass through, and really be as energy efficient as possible. Don't get me asking for an easy piece on camera. That's it. <laughs> All right. Oh. You can literally just have him do it. They don't know that I'm not attached to the pole. <laughs> like you can just edit this and be be better at your job. <laughs> thanks 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 chris that wasn't an easy one that was not an easy piece i need an easy piece what is this the wrong right yeah give me give me some interior give me give me some r11 feeling confident like i can really do it alex do i do i have i ever really helped with insulation mm. besides when you started the Holy ceiling over there at one other house, another job site. I'll thank you. I don't normally help with the drywall insulation, but I do help with the uh, poly seal. Freeze! This, this is just gonna get you messy. It's not really gonna hurt you, don't worry. Oh, oh. There we go. 
Hey there, welcome to Buy, Build, Sell. If I helped with this, it would take them forever to finish this house. That's without a doubt, completely true. Hey guys, so listen, while I have you here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. More tips, more tricks, more numbers on the buy, the build, the sell, on how I can help you on your project or anything that you're doing in the future related to real estate on the buy, the build, and the sell. Now, of course, make sure you press that like button. It helps me get seen by more people just like you. Of course, press subscribe, because it lets you know more videos are coming up. And that bell button, of course, alerts you at all times when something else is being uploaded. Now, of course, this is Jason with uh, Buy, Build, Sell. I'll see you on the next episode. Why are you following me?